Hello, hello, and welcome to Women Nation. Yes. We are super excited today. We have a very special guest, Ms. Marie DePedro. She is the owner of World Class Realty and now Por Favor uh, Coffee Shop. So we're actually here in her coffee shop today. And when we come back, we're gonna get an amazing interview from her and she's gonna tell us her inspiring story. So I'm Danita Hayes. I'm Chola Owens and this is Women Nation. We'll see you guys in a couple minutes. We all need to be encouraged in this world that's in a spin. We all need some positivity. That's why I always tune in to Women Nation. Women Nation. Women Nation. Women Nation. Are you paying $1,000 or more for rent? Is your credit score 600? What are you doing? The Hayes Real Estate Team is here to make your dreams of home ownership come true. Hayes Real Estate Team made the process so easy. Yes, we purchased our first home using our VA loan with zero down and cash back at closing. And the Hayes Real Estate Team got my house under contract in less than 30 days. The Hayes Real Estate Team, all we do is make moves for you. The game of Monopoly taught us how to invest in real estate as a child. But unlike Monopoly, real estate investment does not come with instructions. I'm Chola Owens with World Class Realty, and I can help you pass, go, and collect your profit. Call me today. My name is Arlie Hatcher, also known as The Entrepreneur on Instagram. I would love for you all to come out to the Defining Your Vision brunch and book signing for my book, Heart of a Mompreneur. You can get tickets at www.arliehatcher.com. Women Nation. Welcome back to Women Nation. We are super excited today. We have a very special guest, as we said earlier, Miss Marie DePedro. She has a very inspiring story, and we wanted to bring that to you today. So welcome, Marie. Thank, Thank you so yes. much for joining yes. us. Thank you for having me. Yes, Thank yes, so yes. Much. So you have a very inspiring story, and I actually had the opportunity to sit down with you um, a few days ago, and I mean, my mind, I was just blown away. Wow. You know, I knew you had an inspiring story, but I didn't know the depths of everything that we talked about. And so, you know, let's just get right into it. I wanted to, let's just first just talk about, tell us about your childhood and where you come from. Okay, well, um, I'm born and raised in Puerto Rico, and uh, coming from a very humble beginnings, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, coming from a broken marriage. My parents got divorced when I was three years old. And uh, I was raised with uh, 13 kids. Mm -hmm. Wow. And mm -hmm. some of them, we were related to each other. Like my brother from mom and dad and others were cousins. and some other kids that were left behind for one reason or another. It was not a foster home, um, mm -hmm. but it was just a house with a bunch of kids and few adults. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, there was a lady there that uh, she was the one that took care of us. Uh, mm -hmm. She was not related to us in any ways, but she was just a godsend yeah, angel. she was godsend. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, she never had a job, so um, and she never got married. She never had any kids on her own, mm -hmm. but she dedicated her life to take care of us. And what was her name? Theodora Clark Davis. Um, we call her Tata. Tata. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, she she was just a God sent to took care of all of us, and uh, we learned what a mother love. Uh, should feel like because of her and uh, so she had 13 of you guys 13 of us uh, I was right in the middle I had six I would call them brothers because we got, yeah. were raised together so six brothers older than me and mm -hmm. six brothers younger than me wow mm -hmm. wow how did you how did you meet Tata how did you well it happened that she took care of my mom as well mm -hmm. uh, she, my, she raised my mother and her sister. Oh. And then when my mom uh, married my dad, they were very young, mm -hmm. and had me and my brother, and 
they divorced, they took off, and they left us behind. And um, and actually, how the she met Tata, well, same thing. Um, that's a, a whole lot different story. But her mom, my mom's mom, my grandma, was left behind, wow. and Tata also took care of her. Mm -hmm. So I was just like a chain mm -hmm. of So uh, she was known as the foster mom. Literally. Yeah, but how did she raise that many people? There's no money. God provided. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. So tell us about how was it for you, you know, growing up in that house. Tell us about it. Well, our generation, when she took care of, of us, um, she was already very old, mm -hmm. of course. And she had other people uh, helping out. Yeah. And um, a lot of things happened in the house because she couldn't control what was going on. I mean, again, it was too many of us. And um, the house didn't have any doors or any locks, so we come in uh -huh. and out um, whenever we want to. Again, it was just too many kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of things happened in the house. Uh, we learn about life. Mm. and struggle and fights and um, but we also learn how to love and take care of each other um, she always makes sure that we uh, take care of each other and there was a lot of things that were happening in the house from um, child molestation etc I mean we had a, a guy that was a police officer that comes in supposedly to help out, and he was um, molesting every single one of those child, all those kids in the house, um, and nobody ever say anything mm -hmm. because we were afraid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can understand. Because our parents were not there. Yeah, you know, it, all these kids have different parents. Who knows where? Who was gonna protect yeah. you? Yeah. He was a police officer. Exactly, he was a police officer, yeah, so we cannot yeah. say anything. Mm -hmm. Wow, and, and how it wasn't until we were like over 30 years old that we were able to talk. This man, thank God, today is in jail. So I'm very awesome. happy. That's awesome. That, that is awesome. The streets. You had something to do with putting him in jail. Oh, absolutely, I did. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. You went back for him. Yes, absolutely. And that's awesome. Years later. That is well, amazing. As long as you got him off the streets. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And yeah. that's amazing. And it's and if anything, you know, a lot of women deal with what you have been through, and so you being able to go back and take him off the streets, I'm sure that gave you some kind of relief. Relief. It relief, just happened. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you've ever been a victim of any kind of abuse, you know uh, you can't stop thinking about it. And it's not until you let it out yeah. that then you can actually sleep at night. Yeah. yeah. So the more you talk about it, the easier it becomes Absolutely. to talk about it, and, and it no can help. About it. Yeah, it's not your fault. It's, it's not your shame fault. If you don't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You hold it in. Yes, but you mm -hmm. have to also wait for the right time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To your because how, what was that right time for me was when uh, Tata didn't because she loved this guy mm -hmm. as a, as her son as mm -hmm. well. Like she oh, loved every single okay. one of us. Mm -hmm. So uh, talking about that to her would have break her heart and mm. I couldn't do that to yeah. her yeah but it yeah. wasn't until she got really old and uh, her mind was not and she didn't quite know what there. was going on mm -hmm. Sex. so none of us talked about it because we were protecting her mm -hmm. and uh, once she couldn't um, she wasn't clear in her mind that's when we were able then to you talk were able. Mm -hmm. what happened after you know after that part of your life the molestation was done where did you go from there? Well, what happened was I went, um, I finally moved with my mother when I was like 14 years old. And okay. I, I learned the reason why she, did, she left us behind. I, I, I never was able to understand why. Mm -hmm. And it was because she was in a really bad situation. Wow. Uh, so I went from being in that situation with Tata and these mm -hmm. people to my mom's house where she married a Vietnam vet that was an alcoholic and super abusive. Mm -hmm. um, so I became the adult in that situation because I had to protect her. Mm -hmm. she, I think he tried to kill her every day. Wow. It, was, it was hard. I mean, she was being abused and beat up 
I want to say almost every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I realized that her situation was not going to change. And I didn't have to live like that. Mm -hmm. And I decided it was time for me to go. And I moved with my dad mm -hmm. and finished uh, high school under my dad's uh, roof, which I was not. Uh, uh, <laughs> pretty well, picture either. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I, I graduated finally from high school and uh, decided that it was time to do something. Did, I, did college for a little bit, but um, I needed to support myself. I needed mm -hmm. to do something for myself. But at 17, 18 years old, what do you do? Yeah. Where do you go? Mm -hmm. Who do you ask any questions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have to, I prayed a lot. Yeah. And uh, I figured I needed to find a job that um, that I can enjoy, mm -hmm. and I really didn't know what to do. I really like to swim, and I like the beach. I mean, Puerto Rico is a very small <laughs> island. <laughs> a pretty good swimmer, mm -hmm. and I figure if I can get uh, that was back in the eighties. So uh, Baywatch was a huge. Oh yeah, Baywatch. Baywatch. <laughs> and I figure if I can do Baywatch uh, a job for the rest <laughs> of my life, I get paid for that. That'll be awesome. Mm -hmm. But I decided to join in the Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, now another challenge was going to happen, which is the language barrier. So, yeah, because you're from Puerto Rico and you don't speak any English. Absolutely. No English. <laughs> and you're going into the Coast Guard. Into the Coast Guard. <laughs> and, uh, so that was, a, that was a very interesting story um, or experience. So how did you, because I know we kind of talked about this earlier too, but like you literally went to boot camp not speaking English. How did you manage? <laughs> how did you manage to know what they were telling you to do? Oh, uh, uh, monkey see, monkey do. I mean, you go one way, you just follow them. <laughs> you see, don't run it, you start yeah. running. Oh, okay. yes, and, uh, I remember the, the first night there. Uh, first of all, I remember it was, uh, it was a January 23rd, and I'd never been out of Puerto Rico before. Mm -hmm. I think the lowest temperature in Puerto Rico is probably 70 degrees. That's the coldest. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't, I didn't own any jackets or coats or any kind of long sleeve, anything. So I, I showed up in boot camp in uh, Cape May, New Jersey, in oh, January. Wow. Yes, with a uh, just a t-shirt and a pair of jeans. Wow. I thought I was gonna die. Um, so this woman, she's a company commander, starts screaming at me, and I have no idea what she was saying. I'm looking at her like, what, what's the rush? Why are you yelling at me? <laughs> I didn't know they were supposed to be screaming at me. But anyway, I have no idea what she was saying. Mm -hmm. And, but uh, that alone is just yes. inspiring. It I mean, is. we have absolutely no excuse in America not to be great. If you can come here not knowing any English mm -hmm. and just do what you've done so far. But that's yeah. just amazing. It is. Yeah. It is absolutely amazing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It is. You know, I know you said, you know, you got into the Coast Guard, you got here. What did the Coast Guard put in you that you didn't have before? Uh, it was a life. It was a game changer. For oh, me. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, first was the, the, the determination. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going back to Puerto Rico. I know I was there, and uh, I'm not going back. Uh, Felling in the in boot camp or in the military was not an option, mm -hmm. and I knew that. Mm -hmm. Not knowing the language, yeah, it was going to be a, um, a huge battle for me. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't care. I was. I was not going to go back, and yeah. that was. I was determined, and the years that I put in the Coast Guard taught me uh, work ethics. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't stop working until the job is done. You don't go home until the job is done. That's the bottom line. That's yeah. it. Absolutely. Yes. It is. All right. So now you're here in the United States, and I want to kind of go back to where in in Puerto Rico, where you talked about how you were able to get the guy who molested you um, put in jail. Like, and you said you were then ready to talk about it. What was it that made you ready to talk about it? Well, in 2004, 2005, I was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, the doctor gave me six months of living. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew I was dying. Absolutely, I, there was no way out of it. I was mm -hmm. uh, in a wheelchair. I couldn't see much. I couldn't hear much. I was exhausted. I was really tired. and. Uh, I knew I was going to die, uh, um, but I didn't want to 
die and uh, knowing that this guy was still doing what he was doing mm -hmm. to other kids. And uh, I know it was just time. Yeah. I was I cannot die and leave this guy behind mm -hmm. out in the streets. So I called my mother that was still in Puerto Rico and I flew her here and I talked to her about it. Mm -hmm. And we we both went back to Puerto Rico and made sure this guy was out of out of the streets. That's awesome. Amen. Well, obviously, you're still here. Yes. <laughs> you didn't die. I didn't die. <laughs> so tell us about that. Um, well, um, the way that happened, that was, that's a little bit more complicated and hard to explain because I talked to a friend of mine. Um, again, I was in a wheelchair. I was in really bad shape. And she said to me, Marie, why don't you come to church? with me and uh, I said well I mean I don't have a whole lot to lose I'm dying anyway so might as well start getting closer to my, my spiritual mm -hmm. side yeah, yeah. and uh, I actually I went to church with her um, the day before a day or two before my surgery it was a Sunday and uh, I do you want me to continue? Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, yeah. yes. I want, we're going to make them wait a little mm -hmm. bit. We're going to cut the break and we're going to come back and we're going to let you tell them what God uh -huh. did okay. over your life. That's okay. right. We're awesome. going to go to break. We'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> Life is full of firsts, like buying your first home. The Hayes Real Estate Team is here to help, so you can focus on those other, more important firsts. The Hayes Real Estate Team. My name is Arlie Hatcher, also known as The Entrepreneur on Instagram. I would love for you all to come out to the Defining Your Vision brunch and book signing for my book, Heart of a Mompreneur. You can get tickets at www.arliehatcher.com. Posture Distinguished was created by three childhood best friends who are also entrepreneurs. We wanted to get together to use our community involvement to empower women and provide them with the opportunity for women to promote their businesses while we reach out and support each other. Please join us Saturday, September 23rd from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Comfort Suites located in Northern Suffolk, Virginia. Tickets will be available at Posh and Polish Nail Lounge or Lavish Hair Lounge. There will be special deals and promotions exclusively at the event, so don't miss out. First-time home buyers, it's time. The Hayes Real Estate Team partners with certified credit professionals to make your homeownership dreams come true. To make your move, contact us today. The Hayes Real Estate Team. We're the nation. Ooh. Welcome back. We're gonna finish up this story with the wonderful, beautiful Miss Marie DePedro. Um, it's just been so inspiring so far. So let's just get right back into it, Marie. So tell us, just finish up what you were saying before we had to go off to break. So um, my friend, uh, she was also active duty Coast Guard and she asked me to go to church with her. And uh, so my mom, was pushing me down uh, down the aisle in my wheelchair, and these people that didn't even know me. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, this this happened in uh, Deep Creek Baptist Church. Deep Creek Baptist. Yes. Wow. And we went there, and again, these people I don't I never seen them in my life. They put their hands on me. They were praying, and I'm looking at them like, what's going on? I, these people don't know me, and they're mm -hmm. they're. Po the power of their prayers were wow. so amazing. It was the, it was a humbling experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These people were crying mm -hmm. with their hands on top of me. And um, after they finished praying, they pushed me back to my seat. And uh, the service started. And it happened, coming from Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. our, most of us are Catholics, mm -hmm. so I know what the Catholic mm -hmm. Church do, how the communion goes. I've never been in a Baptist church before, so I'm not used to the uh, communion mm -hmm. being passed to the people. But anyway, <laughs> I um, we receive it. From yeah, the received the communion mm -hmm. and um, the uh, wine or mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. grape juice. And I was at that point, I was kind of on my zone. I was talking, uh, or praying talking to God and brother um, body of Jesus and they talk 
uh, pray. And again, I was in my zone. And the turning point was when I was holding the great juice that is symbolized the blood of Jesus. And I'm thinking, there is nothing more pure than the blood of Jesus. There is no cancer Amen. in the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. This got to be more powerful than chemotherapy and radiation and all this other stuff that I was going to have to go through to be able to be healed. Mm -hmm. And uh, and again, I kind of like, I don't know what happened at that moment when I drank this thing with the faith. And I right there, the minute that I drank the grape juice, which symbolized the blood of Jesus, something happened to me. Mm -hmm. And I cannot put it into words. Here we are. This was back in 2005. Here we are, 2017. Amen. I cannot. Praise I have God. not been able to find the words to ex to explain what happened. I can tell you, the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. never loses its power. Got that right. It is the most incredible thing, mm -hmm. uh, wonderful thing. And uh, when again, what happened there? I can again. I can't put it in words because I really don't know how. And uh, when the service was over, my mom is pushing me to the car, and I told her, I'm not dying, Mom. And she, wow. she couldn't understand what was happening. I said, I don't know what just happened in that church, but I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And God. Uh, sure enough, after that was the surgery, and a few days after the surgery, the doctor comes in, and he asked me to, uh, to see if he could keep the parts, whatever they took off of me, because they didn't understand how the <laughs> cancer the power of God. No? <laughs> and yeah, I thought you, the <laughs> you were just an instrument. Mm -hmm. um, God was the one that performed the surgery. Yeah. And, and they couldn't explain it. No. They couldn't and explain the it. The surgery was in uh, John Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, uh, wow. which is a school of uh, medicine. Y'all, God is real. He is. He, he is, is real. He is amazing. Yes. I'm going to take over because she about to go in and start <laughs> shouting. So I'm going to go ahead and take over. Well, Marie, I do. Now you're here. You have two successful businesses. Up and You have yes. World Class Realty. That is your, yes. you know, that's your real estate yes. firm. I'm an agent. This is, yeah. this is my <laughs> first mentor. <laughs> and this is my new mentor right now. <laughs> so this is, this is nothing but God ordaining. Um, my Absolutely. footsteps with both of Thank them. You. So I am a blessed person. So I know I'm going to cry now. Uh -oh. <laughs> Go now take let me take over. Okay, so now we are here in one of her businesses, which is Por Favor. It is a coffee shop and it is just beautiful. It's it is. beautiful. It? So tell it's us, like, like, okay, so how did you get into real estate and now you have this new business venture? How did you do it? Well, so what happened after the surgery, uh, I knew I was going to be on my way out of the military mm -hmm. and uh, I needed to do something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't came this far just to come this far. Yeah. I mean, I have to <laughs> yeah. continue going. And, and like I was telling you, I don't want nobody to write my book. I want to write my own mm -hmm. book. Yeah. And uh, I decided that I have to do something with my life. And um, real estate should be or let's give that a try and I went to school in the probably I went to school I think uh, right when I was I was actually very sick when I was going through school mm -hmm. and um, the market was crashing supposedly mm -hmm. so it was really bad time bad timing uh, according to uh, economics. the economics yeah. yes but I never felt the market crash the business from day one skyrocket that's awesome and uh and i decided to open my own business in 2012 mm -hmm. and it's been nothing but a great journey that's awesome and uh, again i know at this point it's not even it, it have never been really about the money when i opened the business it was about helping other agents mm -hmm. because i keep getting um requests of for training like how are you doing this how mm -hmm. when the market Go, is going down your business is going up uh -huh. so i figure well let's open my own business and i show you how to how to how I do what i do that's awesome and it has been like that has been a blessing and now the coffee shop 
I mean, I love coffee. <laughs> I'm not having my and it's good too, yeah. y'all. I tried it today. It's very yes. good. So y'all make sure y'all come out. Please. But um, I mean, just from the streets of Puerto Rico to this, it's yeah. amazing. And the I jungle. know, yeah, the jungle. The Absolutely, jungle yeah. Puerto Coming from uh, the south side of uh, the island, it's called a small town called Guayama and Patillas, and I graduate from. Uh, let, let, let me have to say it in Spanish because it doesn't make any sense in English. Uh -huh. Escuela Superior Ana Roque en Humacao. Ooh, it's long name. <laughs> <laughs> she said something there, y'all. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, yes uh, the, the odds of making it in life were slim to very, zero. Mm -hmm. Very, and that's yes. why we wanted to showcase your story because it was one for the masses. Um, I know you're going to reach a lot of people and you're going to move a lot of people to go for whatever it is that they're destined for, you know, and you turn your pain into purpose. Absolutely. And now you are out here servicing all of God's people. And that's why you're blessed. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So thank, thank you. So, so much. thank you so much yes. for allowing us to share your story. Yes. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Yes. And you have inspired me today as well. Oh, well thank yes. You. Thank you for me. <laughs> so, I really appreciate you and. Like I said, these two ladies are why well, I'm here. Aww. So, you know, definitely this is a blessing for me. So I'm going to cry again. Go ahead, Stop. Uh, <laughs> All right. So, Marie, um, your interview has just been so inspiring today. But do you have any final words of wisdom that you may want to give to our viewers out there? Well, I'll tell you what, Danita. Um, life is very short. Very, very short. Shorter than what you can't imagine. Mm -hmm. Um, today you're six years old, tomorrow you're 26, next thing you know you're 50, 70, 90, mm -hmm. and you're dead. <laughs> so <laughs> do not let anybody write that last page of the book. It doesn't matter where you're coming from, the situation that you have gone through, don't let anybody put you down. Mm -hmm. You are the one in charge of your life. I know that's right. Absolutely. You are. Don't let anybody tell you what yeah. you can do and cannot do. Whatever you want to do, you go and do it. That's right. That's right. And always, always help other people. Amen. Because that is our purpose, helping other people. Amen. Amen. So we <laughs> So again, guys, um, again, the story was just inspiring. I mean, it just goes to show you that you cannot allow your past to define who you are. And in this story today, we saw that Marie's life had a significant purpose. Even though she had to go through adversity, she still came out and roared like a lion. So thank you guys for joining us and we will see you next week on Women Nation. See you next thank week you. guys. Somebody will give me some coffee. <laughs> we all need to be encouraged in this world that's in us spin. We all need some positivity.